I'm Bill Hubscher. And I'm Lori Meggs, and welcome to Focus on Marshall. We've come to snowy Promontory, Utah. We're at the ATK facilities for the final reusable solid rocket motor test. They've been testing them here for more than 30 years, a historical event to say the least. Let's meet some of the team who are making this happen. We are at the ATK test stand, standing high above the reusable solid rocket motor, ready for its final test. And joining me now is David Beeman. He is the reusable solid rocket booster project manager at Marshall. And David, first of all, let's remind folks what this motor does for the space shuttle. Okay. Our solid rocket motors provide the primary thrust during the first two minutes of ascent of the space shuttle. And it's very important that you're able to get off the launch pad, thrust up towards second stage and then separate the, the motors and they're parachuted back to, to the ocean, which allows us to retrieve them and reuse them. And it's been a very successful project and program. Tell us about the partnership with ATK. Uh, the partnership has been unbelievable. Uh, we've been fortunate to have the, the brightest minds in the solid rocket motor industry, both on the NASA and contractor side. And over the last 33 years, uh, not only have we had a lot of full-scale testing out here, but we've had a lot of subscale testing that allows us to develop materials that we utilize in this motor. And I think Bill's with one of those ATK folks now. Thanks, David. We're outside the blockhouse, which houses the control room, and about half a mile from the test stand to talk to Harry Reid. He is the ATK program manager for the reusable solid rocket motor. And Harry, outside in the elements today, but uh, how long? You've you've got quite a bit of history here with the uh, with the solid rocket motor. I've been working on this project for 26 years. So you've seen seen it all, I guess. Well, quite a bit. <laughs> well, in that case, tell us what we're going to see on uh, when we actually fire off that test. Well, we we've gone through a series of dry runs, getting ready for today. A lot of reviews. Uh, we'll be down at the road, probably at the viewing site, looking up towards the test stand. And uh, you'll see a bright flame come out of the motor. And then a couple of seconds later, you'll, uh, you'll start hearing the sound of the test firing. And if you pay real good attention, you'll actually feel it in your feet about the same time you start hearing it. It's quite impressive. How far away do people usually uh, can, can feel and tell that there's a test going on up here? Oh, they can tell the test clear over into Tremont in a neighboring, uh, neighboring town about 20 miles away. They can tell. Yeah. Wow. And depending on the, uh, the conditions, the plume of uh, dust that comes up off the ground can be visible for quite a ways. So what kind of things are you going to be looking for? What kind of results are you hoping to get from the test? Well, the, the, uh, the, the FSM test fire program is designed to be a quality assurance check on our product. We do them periodically. So we're testing the performance of the materials, components, and processes that went into building this motor. On this particular motor, well, on every motor that we do, we also qualify various changes that were taking place in the program. Obviously, since we're so late in the program, we have very few changes at this point. We do have a couple of materials that have been, become obsolete that are going to become, be flying on the next to the last firing that we have, the next to the last shuttle mission. We'll be testing those also on this motor. So when you do these tests, obviously for quality control, but do you also test for, for uh, new things that are going to be on there, for, for new developments that you well, make absolutely. in it? Absolutely. Any, any change that we make on RSRM, we test on a solid rocket motor test firing before we fly it. It's a protocol that we have on the program to test before we fly. All right, Harry. Well, thanks very much. I'll let you get back inside now. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm here now with Kent Rominger, and he is the Vice President for the Test and Research Operations here at ATK. And Kent, we are at, I guess you'd say, the business end of this motor. Tell us what we're looking at here. We are. We're looking at the nozzle of a four-segment space shuttle booster, the RSRM. And out of this nozzle, once this motor lights, for a little over two minutes, it produces up to close to 2.9 million pounds of thrust. And a lot of preparation by your team goes into this test. Tell us what goes into that. It, it does, because just like with the, uh, the motors when they're assembled for flight, we do the same thing here. It's produced four separate segments, the nozzle end, the forward dome. We take a period of months, uh, really several months, to put all this together. But what's different between this motor and the, the shuttle motors, first of all, this is horizontal. We've, we fired horizontally. so. Uh, and instead of it moving, we have it held down with millions of pounds of concrete anchored under the, the floor. But we also instrument it. So we actually even have sensors poured into the propellant grain. So while the motor's burning, we gather many, many parameters of data to understand uh, within fine tolerance how well it's operating. So now you're on the test side, but you've also had the unique perspective from the other side. You've ridden a couple of these into space five times. Tell us how that is a different perspective for you. It, it is a different perspective and, and first of all when these beauties light there's no doubt in your mind you're going somewhere. 
You just hope it's the right place. Uh, but no, you know, what we're looking at, I'm very proud of it. this. You know, we've, we've flown over 250 of these motors, of these boosters. Uh, they're extremely reliable. Matter of fact, the most reliable human rated rocket motor in the world. So a lot of pride when this last firing takes place. There is, there's a lot of pride, a lot of history. I've got about a dozen folks here in the test area that work for me that were involved in the very first firing. So it, it's really neat to, to see the history from the very first firing uh, back in the 80s uh, to where we are now. All right, well, thanks a lot, Ken. Look at that, melted the snow right off the mountain. It was beautiful. And truly a testament to all the hard work people have put into the shuttle program. We'll find out where we turn up next as we focus on Marshall. Yeah.